Hello everybody, I am your host Sinjana from Art Terraces and recently I read a book that I want to share my thoughts about and I feel you could benefit from. The book is called The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy and if you haven't read it yet, I hope you will check it out after this. The book is about changing your life and in general and if you have seen from the title of this podcast, this book really changed my thinking about life and I think it can change yours. If you don't know me, I run a mental health and growth tips page for artists and creatives on my social media. Link in the description. So we're going to dive deep into the chapters of the book, the vibe the book gives, and some of my favorite quotes and thoughts on those. So the book has some really great examples, and even things you could personally relate to and use as a way to reform your life. If you've read The War of Art, the beginning of the book kind of gives that vibe. The no-nonsense attitude towards doing what needs to be done, kind of like in the War of Art, but doesn't specifically talk about creating or creatives like what I'm aiming to do here. The book gives you a clear plan on how to get your desired lifestyle, and even gives you exercises to get to these st- steps. But let's go deep into the book, chapter by chapter, without me giving away too much, so you can enjoy it too. So, the first chapter. It goes on to give examples about people who made really small changes, and I mean like minor changes in their life, but changed in the long run. So, before I leave, an example of one of the guys. He wanted to cut some of his calories, I think he wanted to lose weight, and so what he did is he decided to switch from mayo to mustard. Because, was it mayo to mustard or mustard to mayo? I don't know. He switched from one of the sources because one had less calories. That is such a small change, y'all. Like, it is so small, you would never realize what a difference it can make because you still got your sauce. So, basically, it's just like planting a seed and waiting for the months or years to reap their fruits. It took about, I think, 9 to 19 months before they reaped the fruit that they needed to sow. And honestly, there is something that intrigues me about this. The fact that we can change our entire life by making small, almost invisible changes like the sauce example, it, it, it just it blows my mind. For example, if you wanted to get fit, you could choose to do one minute of exercise and increase it by one minute each week. One minute isn't a lot, but and you may not even see the differences within the first month, the first 10 months, but maybe 20 months down the line, you would. And I know that is a very long time, but really, those changes... It really could change your life. And an example from my own life is recently I started taking a drawing course somewhere in the beginning of the year or so. And in order, I took this course because I wanted to pursue my dream career path. And I realized that drawing took so much longer than I thought it would. Like, I thought maybe it would take like an hour a day, but no, it took four to six. And so I decided that I wanted to wake up early when the sun rises to get more time to draw. But when I decided this, I was like waking up at like 9 to 10 a.m. each day. Even at 7 a.m. would be way too early for me. So in the end, I decided to wake up 15 minutes earlier each week. So I set an alarm to wake up 15 minutes earlier each week. And at the current moment, I can wake up around 6.45 or so, which is about the time the sun rises where I live. So yeah, in a couple of months, I did reach my desired position. And the strategy the author talks about works. Now, on to the next chapter. Chapter 2. It is probably one of my favorite chapters, just because of how beautiful it is. Especially like the entrance to the chapter. There is a quote that really got to me that is so beautiful. Like, So, the author attended a seminar a few years back before he wrote the book. At the seminar, there was a dude. He gave the following quote that stuck with the author for years to come. And it was like, what percentage of shared responsibility do you have to make a relationship work? I shouldn't tell you the answer, but whatever I'm going to say next won't make sense. But he said 100%. And if you read the chapter, you'll understand why it's 100%. But the author, Darren Hardy, he took this quote and he related it to life as a whole. And you know, if you think about it between you and your followers on social media, your subscribers on YouTube, you know, all those platforms you are on between you and them how much responsibility do you have to make you successful and you to be found and in reality it is all your job it is your job to connect to your followers it is your job to have consistent posting it is your job to create content that you and your followers enjoy and it's your job to give them value of course and 
you know, when you put that out there, all that effort is going to come back to you. You know, you creating all this content, you're sharing all this inspiration. It will come back to you in due time. You just can't give up on it, you know? So just like how the author talks about the relationship luck has with your success, I've heard a lot of successful artists say they make money from their art, but then they throw in the, but it could have been luck. And I personally believe it isn't just luck that separates successful artists and creatives from unsuccessful artists and creatives. And why do I say this? Firstly, it takes years of skills to be posting online consistently. Firstly, as I said, lots of years of skills. You first need to build up your skill set. Maybe you want to do oil painting. Maybe you want to do digital environment art. Maybe you want to do digital portraits. portraits. And maybe you want to be a character designer. It'll take you a long period of time to build up those skills. So you building up those skills, you gaining those skills is the first part towards you gaining luck. Then the second part is just you posting online and being consistent. And then the third is when you post, you're going to create opportunities with yourself. Those opportunities is what you'll see as luck, you know, because you have the whole world up to you, like just by a tap of a button. You can meet future clients, business partners, and that's where you see those opportunities as luck. But you're not lucky, you're just, you put in the work and you will get results. That is what I'm trying to say. I do need to emphasize that throughout the book, there is this theme of taking responsibility for your problems, your own life, no name calling, no blaming. The fault is all you and you can change and fix anything. Like, don't say that a certain artist or a creative is more successful because of the way they look or where they live. Or there are people who are in terrible environments, really, and they're going further beyond what surrounds them to get to a place that is better for them. And also, don't blame the algorithm for not growing. People are your greatest connection to creating opportunities, not the algorithm. Because people buy your art. People buy your book. People are the one who listens to your music, not algorithms. So, don't blame the algorithm. I said to myself when I read this part of the book, uh, the part where you not meant to blame other people, not meant to blame other things, is... I said that I wanted to write down what I said and whom I blamed at the end of each week and review the list and make accurate 1% changes, as the author refers to it as. But, you know, I haven't gotten around to it. But if you try it and it benefits your life, please let me know in the comments down below. But on a more lighter note, but still speaking about money, the money tree is one of my other favorite examples. And we all know, we all struggle with finances, so this example was literally, literally perfect. So the example from the book is that the author had an assistant who just couldn't save her money because everything she earned actually totaled her all her expenses. And so the author decided to look through this entire list and see how he could help her change her life back. And he said, okay, we will save 1% each month. She didn't really think that it was going to work, but she decided to go with it, listen to him, try it out, right? And they made really small changes, you know, like, she didn't have to change her lifestyle very much. And if you read this part of the book, you'll understand what I mean. Um, but near the end of the year, she had already saved 10% of her money without sacrificing her lifestyle. And as I said, this is one of my favorite examples, because we always think, I can't do certain things because I'm not earning enough. But we can adjust our lifestyle. In such a small manner that you'd never realize you could really save a great deal of money or, you know, you, you can really change your life by really small things. I think I forgot to mention how this book ties very closely to another book, Atomic Habits. And this book does use the idea of habits and not just goals because you don't have just goals. Your goal isn't to reach a certain amount of followers on social media. Your goal is actually to make valuable collect connections so that you can make monetary opportunities. So you can eat every month and not be a starving artist. So don't just say you're going to get 10k followers by the end of the year. But instead, you know, break it down into steps. Step number one, to get 10k followers in a year. How many followers are you going to get each month? And then each week? And then each day? And then what do you need to do each month, week, and day to get there? What kind of posts do you make? 
Do you make wheels, carry falls, that type of thing? And how do you do all of this without burning out? And that's basically to start small. And that's one of the biggest themes of this book, you know, starting small, doing really small things to get to your end goal. And I know for a lot of people, spending time creating content with your art seems like you're sacrificing valuable time to your craft. But I think, instead of thinking, what are you sacrificing in your life? Think about what you're adding to it, the value you're giving people, the inspiration that you're giving people. They're going to comment on that. They're going to like it. And that's dopamine, you know? And that's what makes you happy, really. Just the fact that people love what you're creating. And, you know, that's eventually going to lead to monetization and sharing your creations. Now, if you want to make changes to your life, another thing you should do, according to the author, is have a daily schedule or some tasks you'd like to accomplish each day to get to your goal. In which case, you would need a daily routine. But if you don't have one, you should definitely get one. But the problem with routines is that you may still have some bad habits, and this book touches on deeply on bad habits. So does the other book I mentioned, Atomic Habits. And I think if you combine the knowledge of the books and the author Gail goes of both books, then the author also goes on to giving his morning routine and his evening routine. He says you can't control what happens during the day. You can't control how your morning and night ends. So I just decided to mention some of the things I've implemented into my own life from his morning routine. So in the morning, he's to start his day good, he sets an alarm and he reads for 30 minutes each morning while drinking coffee. I do the same thing. I, in the morning, I wake up and I read. Okay, the second thing he does for his morning is at 7 a.m. sharp, he has a collaboration and he takes a few minutes to collaborate his day where he brushes over his top three one-year goals, his five-year goals, his quarterly objectives, which is basically things you achieve every four months to get to your bigger end goal, and his top goal for the week and month. And then each day, he reviews his top three most valuable priorities, asking himself, I only did three things today. What are the actions that will produce the greatest results in moving closer to his bigger goal? Now, as I said, I've obviously altered these things to my own life, but I think just doing these can really change your own morning and for the next scrolling on social media and also establishing a night routine which as i said i don't currently have but maybe i'll think about it so routines can be boring and the author sometimes like to change it, his routines so he avoids the boredom and i think it's a great idea in order to get rid of stagnant energy he also uses goal strategies in his relationships too right he he has a wife and kids and he keeps the weekends open for his family and why and for me, this is really an important point. I think as a creative person, you should be looking for more like-minded people. People who can uplift you, advise you, people who support you. You should follow accounts on social media that has this type of positivity that can lead you in the right direction. For example, I decided to start this podcast because of an account I followed, tz.v2. And I joined his Discord. His Discord really just changed my life and gave me the motivation, the push to start this podcast, to start my account, even though I felt like, what could my voice say in the sea of voices? But yeah, just following inspirational stuff, and it can just give you the push to put what you need out there. Now, we're nearing the end of the book. Well, my thoughts on it, because you still have to read it. What I want to say is the author shares the biggest secret to success. And honestly, it's really simple. You think, why haven't I been doing that? I mean, he says that to himself. The biggest secret is, drumroll please, do -do 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 -do. just doing a little extra. I know, right? Like, what? A little extra? When I read that, I was expecting something bigger. But I guess I should have not been surprised. Just doing a little extra. I know, right? Like, what? When I read that, I was expecting something bigger. I'm not gonna lie. But I guess I shouldn't have been surprised. The entire book was examples of changing your life with small things. And the small thing you gotta do is do a little extra. You know, you want that job. Go and butter up the bosses. 
you know what I'm trying to say, just doing a little extra effort. As the author puts it, when you hit the wall in your disciplines, routines, rhythms, and consistency, realize that's when you are separating yourself from your old self, scaling that wall and finding your new powerful and your new powerful triumphed and victorious self and just multiplying your results. The author has pages worth of basically the same principle that is also a big theme in the anime, one of my favorite animes, Black Clover, where Yami, the captain of the Black Bulls, constantly says to his team, surpass your limits. Whenever they face an enemy that simply seems like impossible to defeat, he says, by defeating your enemy and surpassing your min- limits, you'll get stronger. You know, so the same with you. If you can't draw something and you're really struggling, you can go out and learn it. And then when you come back and try to finish that thing you couldn't draw, you have surpassed your limits because you have pushed past what you thought you couldn't draw. You know, or. You know, any literal example. I think a very good example from my own life that I would love to share with you guys is a regret I had is when I didn't put in a little extra effort. So, I was in the acting industry of life. I'm not really sure how to put it, but I was there. And I was doing a graduation performance and there was this big guy. He was a director. He was there. And literally when I was done, he clapped the loudest out of everybody. And he was like, you are somebody I want to work with. And I felt super embarrassed, which is crazy. I mean, I just stood up and acted in front of a bunch of people. I wasn't myself, but then I felt really embarrassed when he wanted to work with me. My foolish ass decided to not follow up with this, to not go up to him and meet him and talk to him, rather I just went and rushed home. And yeah, it was probably something that could have helped me back then. But, you know, that little effort, I threw it off the drain, you know. So, getting back to the the whole thing about surpassing limits. If you hit a wall, that's good. It's perfect. It's a perfect opportunity to grow and surpass your limits. You know, just do better and beyond what is expected. It seems ridiculous, but that 2% extra effort, like, had I decided to go up to the director, maybe I would have opened myself up to different opportunities and possibilities. Now, my favorite part of this entire podcast, my favorite quotes, some of which I've been posting on my Instagram at art underscore terraces, so you can check those out. So, quotes. Number one, a single poor habit that doesn't look like much in the moment can ultimately lead you miles off course from the direction of your goals and your life you desire. I think this quote is pretty straightforward and I think there's multiple examples of it in the book and I feel like we speak about it here too. Quote number two, we can all make powerful choices. We can all take control back by not blaming chance, fate, or anyone else for our outcomes. It's within our ability to cause everything to change. Rather than letting past hurtful experiences sap our energy and sabotage our success, we can use them to feel positive, constructive change. Chapter 3. Find your fight. Many of us have regrets. Maybe you pursued the wrong career all your life for money, peers, family, or following the rest of the crowd. Maybe you wished to invest early in your skills. Maybe you wish you didn't pay for that art school, but rather took a course online. Whatever it is, you can't let your past mistakes hold you back. You can't blame your past self or others. It's not your responsibility what others do, but it is your responsibility to heal and to make amends for the mistakes for a more positive and brighter future. And quote number three, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, the way he stands in times of challenge. Martin Luther King. A lot of successful YouTubers, streamers, artists, writers, actors, they come from the worst conditions. They live really poorly, some of them. 
they worked several jobs, and yet they pursued and endured and made it out to the end. The point is, you can't be complaining, but rather trying to stand tall, even in the moments you're uncomfortable, find a solution, make a way. And that's why I love this quote, because although there are tough times, growth never happens when things are easy. Quote number four, another one of my favorite quotes, but at this point, everything is my favorite. Without the proper routines built into your schedule, the rest of your life can be unruly and unnecessarily hard. So the reason this is one of my favorite quotes is because there was a point in my life when I had no routine. I woke up random times, stayed up late on social media, and just felt like utter shit. But when I started making small changes like daily routine, morning routine, waking up early, reading books such as this one, my life did feel start to feel less stressful less hard because I knew I was on the right path to what I wanted and because the words of encouragement I received from some of these books and putting into practice some of the things I learned just it helped so much. Quote number five, once you have a morning routine, I want you to consider cost and quantity until further notice. Now, if you do read the book and do decide to have a morning routine, Consider it as important as bathing and never skip it. I'm not saying that you won't have slip-ups, but what I'm saying is that if you get right back into it. Now, quote number six. Winning the race is all about pace. Be the tortoise, the person who, given enough time, will virtually beat anybody in a competition. As a result of positive habits, and behaviors applied consistently. We're always trying to one-up people and beat them, and although essentially you will or can beat them, that shouldn't be your aim. Your aim should be to beat yourself, and I know that's contradictory to the quote, but I put it in here to remind you, you will beat everybody, but not by rushing and having your attention divided. Consistency is the key to success. Say with me again, consistency is the key to success. Quote number seven. The dream in your heart may be bigger than the environment in which you find yourself. Sometimes you have to get out of the environment to see the dream fulfilled. Now, although this book is about achieving your goals and keeping consistent habits, I'm glad for a little moment that the author brings up that your environment matters. I feel artists and creatives who live in toxic environments or are not surrounded by an environment that can cultivate your best abilities. Nothing in the book he says will help you. And perhaps I'll cover this in another podcast. Basically, I just want to say I feel deeply for you. If you're in this environment and I just feel like it's such a deep topic that I just, I can't go into it like in five minutes. But I can say, try to find a way out of the situation. If you're old enough, try to move out of that toxic environment. Stay with a friend, a trusted family member, work a separate job while still working on your creative craft in order to save up enough money to leave that situation. But if it gets really bad to the point where it's affecting your mental health and jeopardizing what you want to do to achieve in your life, You need to find a solution with a good, clear mind, but really, an immediate solution, or you'll just live your life unhappily. Quote number eight. In all areas of your life, look for the multiplier, opportunities where you can go a little further, push yourself a little harder, last a little longer, prepare a little better, and deliver a bit more. Well, this is what ties back into what we spoke about before starting the quotes, and so I feel like this is a complete full circle. So, in conclusion to this podcast, and to what the author says, whenever you fall off the wagon of consistency, take out this book. Or, if you have none, or you're looking to change your life, or you're thinking, like I have, read this book. The author also reminds us to go for whatever we want, because... Ideas uninvested are wasted. For example, you may think nobody would care for what you post on social media because it's been done so many times. 
but do believe deeply in it and go the extra mile to do what others are not doing and create that which you see and desire that nobody else is. If you have an idea, you gotta try it out. You'll never know its potential and it'll just be a wasted idea if you don't try it out. And you know what? Look back on your life five years ago. Are you now what you thought you'd be five years later? Have you kicked the bad habits you vowed to kick? Are you in the shape you wanted to be? Do you have the cushy income, the inviolable lifestyle, and the personal freedom you expected? This is a quote straight from the author, and I relate it to it because it's difficult to get to your desired position, but you can create your dream, your comfortable life through belief, consistency, a schedule, a routine. He gives it all in this book, and obviously a supportive environment. This book has showed me with effort and consistency, I can get whatever I dream and desire for, you know. I'll get that life I desire, and it's why I wanted to share it with you. But also, we've all fallen for little small things during time, and don't, don't, don't act like you haven't. Don't you dare. Don't be fooled by the latest gimmicks and quick fixes. I think a lot of us are trying to make quick money and just do something that'll get that, but I think the author puts it simply. Stay focused on the simple but profound disciplines that will lead you in the direction of your desires. You know that success isn't over night and it isn't easy either you know so guys success isn't simple and takes consistent effort and not hard work but smart work and also showing up every day to what you dread but you can make the dreaded better go and read atomic habits because it shows you how to have such habits and do those difficult habits while doing something you enjoy so, in terms of like the dreaded things, like if you want to be able to learn a new language, show up every day and practice what's needed, despite your fear of looking silly or being a slow learner, or whatever you feel is holding you back. Currently, I'm learning how to speak a language, I understand the language, speaking is really difficult, and I think I just feel foolish, or what if I am going to be disrespecting someone by saying the wrong thing, but, you know... As I said, you need to scale your life, you know, look at everything and be there like, it's okay, you know, <laughs> it's really, really okay and I can do this, you know, that is what you gotta say. You can build a, a community online too, through posting consistently and giving value to your followers. And of course, never forget your why. Why do you want to do what you want to do? Why do you want to learn that language? Maybe you want to connect with other people. Why do you want to learn oil painting? Maybe you just really love the way oil paintings look. Why do you want to get 100,000 followers on Instagram? Maybe you want to start a business and want more support. Or maybe you have already a big following and want more support, as I said, so that you can create more stuff, you know? And pay people to help with the background processes that nobody sees. So, that is my take on the book. What are your opinions on it? If you've read it, I'd say this book changed my mind about what is real work and the real steps you need to take to achieve your desired life. And just that a lot is in your mindset and environment. Everything is up there, you know? So, thank you for listening. Subscribe to the podcast on YouTube. And share this podcast with your friends and family who can relate. And go follow art underscore terraces on Instagram. And don't give up your good habits. Be consistent, my lovely creators. And that is all from me. Oh, wait. Wait. I do have a question. Question of this podcast. What is a bad habit you would like to get rid of? Let me know in the comments down below my bad habit. I would like to get rid of is probably <laughs> probably like having a schedule but then sometimes just like getting lazy to get up and do it and like wasting like five minutes like that's a valuable five minutes yeah that's my bad habit what is yours let me know in the comments down below like this podcast share it with anybody who is into these type of books and 
I shall see you in the next podcast.